Are you getting the most out of using sources over on the family search family tree platform? Probably not. Now we as genealogists know the importance of having quality sources attached to our relatives, but are we making sure that we're attaching all of the names that are on in records we find to the family search family tree? Now, one of the biggest mistakes that I have encountered when I've worked with newbie genealogists is they find a source and they attach it to their direct ancestor and that's it. When I went cl around cleaning up family trees, and you'll be able to find out more about cleaning up your family tree in this video. Check the link in the description to find it. But when I talk to individuals about cleaning up the family tree, I would often find a lot of instances where they didn't finish attaching sources. Here's an example. Right here, we have John Townley and it says unfinished attachments. That's what I'm talking about. Family Search has now started rolling out this really cool reminder to say, hey, did you get everybody that is listed on a record attached to your family tree? So I'm over here in the sorts section on Family Search and I'm gonna scroll down until I see that notice. That notice it says unfinished attachments and it's for a death record and or burial record. So let's go ahead and see what do you mean I haven't finished the attachments. So what you see here is that the source is linked from John Townley in the record and the family search family tree, my version of John Townley, but there was a father named on this record and I don't have it attached to this person in the family search family tree. So it behooves us to go and look at the actual record to see how did I miss that information? So we're gonna zoom in and then we find John Townley. And if we look at the column headlines, we will be able to see what all these fields are, but there's the name, Effingham in the father's field. And so we should be able to link it to the tree. But what often happens is either you um, didn't know that Effingham, this Effingham was part of your family when you first attached this record to the family search family tree. It could also mean that someone didn't finish attaching the source. They just stopped with attaching it to John Townley. Now, John Townley is featured in my brick wall series. You want to check the description for the beginning of that series. But I did find that this Effingham is indeed this Effingham. So I can go ahead and finish adding the information. I always want to have a reason statement. Check out this blog post for some tips on how to write good reason statements. But I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So once I'm finished creating a reason statement, I click OK. And now that I go back to the source, hit refresh, and that is going to be resolved. Now there are other times when there are unfinished attachments and I think to myself, what the heck is going on? I know I attached this. If I come to Effa Brown, I see that I attached this record in 2013 and it has unfinished attachments. And there are a number of them as I scroll down this page. So I'm going to go to the first one and see what's going on. Marriage record, unfinished attachments. And notice, even though the source is showing up in the source spots, it's not green. It's not connecting. So in 2013, a number of these records didn't have the images to them or family search has updated their databases since then. So they just want us to go and double check our work. So I can go ahead and do that. You always want to check the image and go through the process. Now, after I write that reason statement and attach, then I can move on to Leo Chase, the spouse, and the I don't have to write that reason statement again, which is really nice. However, I already have this marriage record information in here. So don't add duplicate information in. This is where a lot of people go wrong and then you have to watch that video on how to clean up the marriage information and make it go away. So don't add this information if you can already see that it's right there and then just click attached and move on. And now you have finished attaching that record. Hit refresh and you can move on to the next entry. So here's a case where I did everything I could to go ahead and attach this record or another research did. I can't just always say it's me. But in this case, 
the mother of the bride is not linked. The so first thing I need to do is change to Albert, and then I'm gonna change to his wife, and then it switches, and now we have N, Anna and Emma. Now you need to go through and make sure that the Anna is indeed Emma, or see if Frank has another spouse or another female that he created a child with before you go and um, connect it. This is something I often find in family search with the unfinished attachments. I went through and I got found Effie and Leo and their two children. They had a lodger while they were living in the 1920s and recorded in the census record. So what do you do then? Well, it depends. If you want to go ahead and start researching Alvin Reed, then you're going to have to try to figure out if the Alvin Reed is already in the family search family tree and link this record to them. Or if they're not in the family search family tree, then you're going to have to create a new profile for them and start reaching researching them. Or you're just going to have to ignore it. Now, if this is a marriage record and it's the name of the minister, which often shows up, Maybe you don't want to research the minister. Let's just kind of leave it there. Um, if it's a lodger, they could be a relative or people actually boarded total strangers. So it's a decision to make. Let's go ahead and see if we can figure out how to add Alvin to the tree if you decide, yeah, I want to go ahead and add them to the tree. Well, the first thing we need to do is try to see if Alvin or somebody we can think of as Alvin is in the tree. So I go to family search, I mean family tree and find and now I'm going to go to this page. Now I know that Alvin, let's go here and look at the record. Switch to Alvin. So Alvin is 24. His birth date is estimated in 1896. His parents are from Ohio. His birth weight is in Ohio and there's not a lot of other information. He's a lodger. So we're going to put that in. Alvin. And remember, the spelling might not be accurate. He was born about 1896 in Ohio. And I'm not seeing anybody just yet jumping out. Maybe this one, Clyde Elvin Reed. So if you can't find them, you can click on recent, add unconnected person. And we're going to put in the information we know. Mail. He was born in 1896, so it's quite likely that they're deceased. And then I'm going to click next. Now Family Search is going to look. Did I find anybody? No, I didn't find anybody. That matches very close. So you create the new person. And now we have Alvin. I'm going to copy this ID number. And I'm going to go back to the source that we were working with. Review and attach to record to the family search family tree. Now, because I just created them, it's right there. But if I ever had couldn't find them, I can drop that ID number in there and click select. Now I can bring over this information, clean it up just a little bit, and write a better reason statement. Once I attach that record, then I can go to his profile, hit refresh, and I can begin researching him and learn more about him. So how often are you making sure that you finish attaching sources to people in the family search family tree? And how often do you find yourself creating somebody new in order to accommodate those extras in the records that you're visiting? Let me know in the comments section below. If you want more tips on how to use family search, click this playlist up there. And if that doesn't meet your fancy, be sure to check out this video, which was spe selected specifically with your interests in mind.